What? Wrestling content? AEW content? What in the world is this? What is happening? I don't even know. Actually, I do know because I wrote the segment and prepared this episode. So, yeah. Yeah, we're going to take just a quick pivot to talk a little bit about AEW and their world champion, Chris Jericho. Now, with Jericho, he's been the man for AEW since they launched in terms of weekly television on TNT. It's been great on Wednesday nights to have wrestling back on TNT and to specifically have like a big rival now to WWE. Now, to be clear, while AEW did get a multi-year deal that'll keep them on TNT through 2023 now, they've got a long way to go before they can even dream of really butting heads with WWE, but their product is refreshing. It brings a, a different style, a more hybrid between an indie style and uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling style to the mainstream in the U.S. And right now, they're going head-to-head on Wednesday nights with NXT, who's also obviously picked up a national broadcast deal. And that's really intriguing as well, because I know I have yet to really dig into NXT, but they're doing some great things as well. And for now, AEW and NXT is a pretty good you know, head-to-head rivalry on that night aew has won almost all of the ratings wars week by week thus far there has been a couple times where nxt has jumped up and passed them one week on christmas day specifically uh aew flat out took the week off because they didn't want to i guess take the hit of the low ratings on christmas and even then nxt failed to break a million viewers so there is something to be said there about that, but a big part of what's helping AEW, other than just the phenomenal talents at the top with Cody Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, uh, you got Chris Jericho, you got John Moxley, aka Dean Ambrose, you got Kenny Omega, you got the Young Bucks. You have a lot of great talented guys there who have built up their brand and their reputation uh, elsewhere away from the WWE in recent years. But Chris Jericho's ability to reinvent himself has been phenomenal throughout his career. He he is legitimately entering the conversation of one of the greatest of all time. I still hesitate. There are some people who say he is the greatest. I hesitate to say that, but the guy is in his late 40s. He's still a great worker, fantastic charisma on the mic. Uh, he is relentless and tireless in his ability and in his effort to reinvent himself. You think about the whiny cruiserweight that he was in WCW in the mid to late 90s where he was the man of a thousand and four holds just in his feud with uh, Dean Malenko, the man of a thousand holds. And you you had so much great bits from him back then where he was just a whiny heel. He, he lost in controversial fashion his cruiserweight championship. And so he went the next week uh, WCW was in Washington, D.C., and so he literally went to the steps of Congress trying to get people to sign his petition for a rematch for wrestling, and this was just like an actual bit that he did. People had no idea who he was or what you know wrestling he, uh, he was even representing. They're like, a wrestling match? What? Like, everyone was confused. It was just a hilarious comic gold, and you had other moments as well with that. You had him... Um, I already mentioned the 1,004 holds. You had his feud with Goldberg where he basically brought out... It was basically the WCW Gilberg in that case. You had all kinds of great moments like that. Then he goes to WWE in 99 going into 2000. He's the millennial man in this case. Y2J persona is born. And they make him into a main eventer. He's the first ever undisputed champion. And then you start getting an infrequent period in his career where he's balancing his rock band Fozzie, formerly Stuck Mojo, and he's balancing that with coming back to the ring. So you have him leave around 2005 or six, come back in 2007 with a bit of a new look. And then he was kind of following at the time when he first came back those same beats, but he didn't feel like they were working. So he reinvented himself, uh, became a heel character again in 2010. He became kind of like a character from No Country from Old Man, the very slow talking and intense heel and he got it over he worked uh he made it work he had a fantastic feud with Shawn michaels in that span as well and he's been very good at reinventing himself i will say things did get stale for me between 2012 and probably 2016 he had a couple of returns in there and even though he'd have all these great promos and vignettes that would run before his return he couldn't quite find the next right formula but he reinvented himself then again 
uh, forming a partnership with Kevin Owens at that time, the Universal Champion in WWE, and you got things like the List of Jericho and just this new persona where he was still the the conniving heel, but he suddenly was a little bit goofier, a little bit sillier uh, in his approach and everything like that. So he got that over in a big, big way, and he still he got a moderate push. I mean, his push was really just at Kevin Owens' side during Owens' push, and then they ended up coming to a head and having their feud after the Festival of Friendship fell apart. And yeah, after that, he he left. He went to New Japan Pro Wrestling. He had some great success over there. And then he comes to AEW. And now he's reinvented himself again, where now he is their inaugural champion. And he's had a pretty good run since they opened up business on weekly television back in October. He's feuded with a lot of talent. Cody Rhodes. Uh, he's He's... He's done what you want your champion to do. He's not just feuding with the guys at the top of the card, but he is having good matches and giving kind of a rub for some of these guys in the middling ground and making them look like stars. That's the best thing you can do in that case because it gives them a boost and it definitely avoids the perception that you only work with the very, very top guys. Now, he's not doing huge programs with the middle card guys, but it is what it is. He's really been able to reinvent himself, and now this new persona, which is kind of a hybrid of the previous one, but instead of being quite as goofy, he's a little bit more of a he's a little bit more intense, but he's got this new faction around him, his inner circle. Uh, you know, Hager is there, the former Jack Swagger from WWE. You have Sammy Guevara. You have uh, his. Why am I blanking on his tag team? That uh, the two Hispanic wrestlers that are his tag team. Uh, within his faction. I'm blanking on them for some reason. I guess because the last episode I watched of uh, AEW Dynamite, for whatever reason, they weren't in the ring with him during his promo with Dean Ambrose. But now he's working... Excuse me. John Moxley. He's doing his program now with John Moxley. That's the big match that they're building up for. That's a really interesting thing there as well that they're doing. But he's got this whole new persona. Let's jump on. Uh, drinking a little bit of the bubbly. He's just, He's got... This very good knack for getting things over, whether it's just the funny way he talks about them or just his charisma in general. You know, the the list of Jericho was like a WWE thing, so now it's the lexicon of Le Champion. Like, he does a good job blending the goofiness while still being kind of the, the shit-eating grin of a heel. And it's worked out great for him. And I think it's been exactly what AEW needs in its inaugural champion because... It gives the baddie, you always want the baby face, the top baby face is chasing that baddie uh, in terms of the title and everything like that. If you put a championship on the baby face, it's hard to keep that momentum going for a long time. And I think that they've been really smart in how they've broken it up. They did not put the belt immediately on Cody Rhodes because they understood that would actually be a bad thing to do given his stake in the company and starting it up. One, it would look too much like self-aggrandizing for him, where like he's just crowning himself in this case because he does have an official title with the company. It would have been the very easy thing to do to have at the first pay-per-view that Jericho had to defend it to put it on Cody. And Cody even one-upped it by saying if he lost to Jericho in that match, which we know wrestling is not forever, nothing is forever, but his uh, stipulation he imposed on himself was that if he lost that match, he would never challenge for the title again. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. At some point, Cody Rhodes will be the AEW World Champion. But for now, it was a good way to get heat uh, for Jericho as well in that match. And you know what? They've handled a lot of his storyline very well, I think, with Jericho. I think you've seen a little bit of everything from him. Uh, the inner circle is the main the main staple, I would say. It, you have the elite, which is you know your Cody Rhodes, Young Bucks... Hangman Adam Page is kind of on the outskirt of that right now. And uh, you have Kenny Omega. You have them, the former Bullet Club, but the All Elite and the Elite in All Elite. And you have the Inner Circle. Those are the two main factions, and they've been feuding. So that's the best stuff right now on AEW. And Jericho, I think, was the right guy at the right time. The way he's been able to reinvent himself, even after a little bit of a slow period there in the early 2000s, early to mid 2010s, I think he's really done a great job. And I don't know how many more years he has. Obviously, his body has changed quite a bit in the past few years, really the past couple years. But at the same time, he's still working great. His charisma is irrefutable. And I think he's got a chance 
to really help AEW not only hang around and be competitive for now, but I think he has a chance to help lead them into legitimate contention, certainly with NXT and possibly with time, even uh, even the big boys on the block in WWE. But I don't know, man. Uh, it's all I know. The main thing I do know is it is exciting to actually watch wrestling again on Thursday, or excuse me, on Wednesday nights now. Kind of like the Monday Night Wars of old now. Instead of watching WWF, as it was known then, and WCW, Monday Nitro, instead of watching Raw and Nitro, I'm now focused instead on Wednesday nights on NXT and AEW Dynamite. And it's really refreshing. It's it's a little nostalgic for me, and it's a great product. Both, both companies are doing a great bang-up job there. I wish I could say the same for the main roster for WWE, for SmackDown and Raw, because, oof. I don't know how long it's going to be before you get me talking about that very frequently.